Top five, top five, top five. All right, welcome to the countdown, ladies and gentlemen. We are in the middle of July, so you know we're itching for football season to be back. So we thought, what better ranking could we do than ranking the top five franchise cornerstones in the NFL? Things are a little dry this time of the year, but it's always exciting once it gets close to NFL camp. So we're ready to break down some really important players to the future of the NFL landscape. Absolutely. So these are guys that have to be 20 four years or younger under 25 years old so players who are 25 and above did not make the list they have to be under that and pretty much we were thinking about from the perspective of if these gms could draft any player under 25 who would they take so these are the top five players that they would be selecting premier players premier positions we had to put our gm caps on to think about this one so we got your top five players under 25 years old so make sure you smash that like button and hit that subscribe before we really go in and break down this episode. And before we get into the countdown, go check out Fangear Nation for some great jerseys. Not only do they got jerseys, but they got canvases for the wall, shirts, sweatshirts, and all of this for the low. But don't worry, we still got y'all with a discount code. That's right. This is PSO's official merchandise partner, so you can use code PSO15 for 15% off your first order. So go type in fangearnation.com while those low prices are still available. Support your favorite squad and save a good amount of money while doing it. And now, back to the countdown. So starting off the countdown of the top five franchise cornerstones at number five, we got Jamar Chase. Wait, Jamar who? <laughs> Yeah, when Jamar Chase isn't trolling Patrick Mahomes or defending his guy Joe Burrow, he's making plays left and right on the football field with his speed, his elusiveness, his ability to catch in traffic, can just make any kind of play that you want a receiver to make. And it's no coincidence that as soon as he got into the league, the Cincinnati Bengals were immediately a title contender and one of the best teams in the league. Yeah, I mean, despite being on a team with T. Higgins and having a stacked wide receiver room as a whole, right. Jamar Chase is still one of the smoothest cats in the league. I mean, just breaks people down effortlessly. Like, when you watch Jamar Chase accelerate and you watch him run routes, it looks like he's jogging and just striding. Yeah. But let you, he's just mitzing corners up and running past people and really making some of the most exciting plays that we've seen over the last two years. So Jamar Chase is really just a big-time player. And that's why I got on my chest. And we'll probably see him on a lot of fans' chests throughout next season. No doubt. Just like at number four, we got Sauce Gardner of the New York Jets, already considered one of, if not the best cornerback in the league right now. I mean, Sauce last year was just completely incredible. Really took the league by storm. Smooth corner, long, rangy corner. It's really hard to get past him. It's really hard to throw balls over top of him. Has elite ball skills and really just was the perfect complement to that New York Jets defense that wound right. up being one of the best in the league last year. He was really strapping things down out there with DJ Reed, and he really had that team just, just gelling as a whole. Brought a lot of swag, brought a lot of confidence, brought a lot of sauce. You know, Sauce Gardner is going to be one of the best corners, if not the best corner, for a very, very, very long time. Yeah, and this guy's only like 22, 23 years old this year. So he has so much of a bright future ahead of him. And we saw what he did at Cincinnati. Absolutely strapping dudes left and right, locking things down, and then carried that right into his rookie year with the Jets, winning that defensive rookie of the year. I think it might have been unanimous. Yeah. And if it wasn't, it should have been because he was the clear cut best defensive rookie in this class. And not only already one of the best cornerbacks in the league, but one of the best players in general. Yeah, one of a, a more unheralded player in college, you know, wasn't really a big recruit, wanted to go into Cincinnati. Obviously, they wanted up being in the college football playoff. But I guarantee you, he's far from unheralded now, especially after coming into the first year and then doing what he just did. Oh, yeah, they all know the sauce now. Damn right. So getting into number three, we go from sauce to El Jefe with Justin Jefferson. He might be the best wide receiver in the NFL as well. I mean, Devontae Adams also has a case, but El Jefe took his game to another level once again this year, continuing on that upward trajectory so far in his career, setting records left and right with Kirk Cousins as his quarterback, Crazy. not letting that affect him, using that ability to get open, route running, all those things, the separation just puts him on a level, and then you see what he does against the Buffalo Bills, making some crazy catches throughout the year. He's really an all-around great receiver already and just has such a great future ahead of him as well. I mean, something's in the water at LSU. Same thing with Jamar right. Chase as Jettas. I mean, these guys really don't look like they're moving that fast. They don't like they're doing a lot of extra stuff, not wasting a lot of movement. Justin Jefferson truly has taken the league by storm. His first three years might be the greatest we've ever seen from yeah. a wide receiver. I mean, just dynamic in every way. And like you said, he's doing this with Kirk Cousins. 
Right. I mean, his second best receiver last year was Adam Thielen, who's getting up there in age and might not be as good as a receiver as he was in the past. But it's going to be interesting to see how well Addison plays and how much that takes away from his stats. But it also will take a lot of uh, double coverage away from him as well. So Jettas, he's going to do what he had to do, and he's going to make plays. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, they can line him up at slot, out wide, on the left, on the right. One of the most versatile receivers in the league. And at number two, we have one of the most versatile defenders in the NFL in Micah Parsons. Be. Micah Parsons, another player that truly took the league by storm. Obviously a common theme. He can stand up. He can put his hand in his dirt. He can rush standing up as well. He can get picks. He can strip you and take it to the crib. He can do all of this stuff. And this is what is stacked. Dallas Cowboys edge group that also features features Demarcus Lawrence, Dante Fowler, Dorrit Armstrong, drafted Sam Williams in the second round last year, and it doesn't matter. This dude's playing every single snap of every single game. Doesn't matter where the coaches put him, he is going to make something happen. He is truly one of the most feared players in the NFL, despite his stature. I mean, he's like 6'1", 240 maybe, probably about 230. And he's out here just dominating tackles, dipping, spinning, putting his hand in his chest and pushing him into the quarterback. I mean, this guy's a true problem. And it's it's rare to be scared of defenders when they're 22, 23 years old. But he really has tackles shaking before the play even starts. Yeah, I mean, this guy hasn't even entered his prime yet. And I would make an argument, and I think there's a good argument to make, that of any player in the NFL, offensive coordinators would probably least want to play this guy right here who we're talking about in Micah Parsons just because you don't know where he's coming from. He could come from the left, he could come from the right, he could come right up the gut and still make plays in the backfield, still take away what the offense is trying to do and just completely change the game plan all by himself and really is going to be the anchor for that Dallas Cowboys defense for years to come and he's representing the Cowboys on and off the field already kind of the face of the franchise alongside Dak Prescott obviously and just such a great young man overall that he is on and off the field and we're going to see that translate to more and more things in the future and it's I think it's inevitable that he one day becomes that defensive player of the year that he's getting so close to becoming as well. Just like Jetta sliding to the 20s, him sliding to the 11th pick might be one of the biggest mistakes GM's made in NFL history. So, <laughs> remarkable talent. Yeah, he slid, but one guy who did not slide was Trevor Lawrence, who we have to put at number one. Here's the thing, okay? Is Michael Parsons a better football player than Trevor Lawrence? Yes. Is Sauce Gardner a better football player? Yes. Is Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase better football players? Are they better at their position than Trevor Lawrence? Sure, you can make that argument. I'm not going to disagree with you. Brandon's not going to disagree with you. But when it comes to who these teams would draft at number one overall, what's the most important position in sports, Brandon? Quarterback. No Quarterback. Question. It has to be. And so Trevor Lawrence is a franchise game-changing talent at the most important position, so he has to go number one. It's a no-brainer, already earning MVP votes into his second year. Coming out the gate, he was one of, if not the greatest quarterback prospect that we've ever seen, yep. and obviously his rookie year kind of derailed him a little bit with the fiasco that Urban Meyer caused down there, but once he got a legitimate coach, someone who, I don't know, has won a Super Bowl in Doug Peterson and actually has a good offensive history and track record, or who would have thought, Trevor Lawrence already becoming one of the better quarterbacks in the league, and he's already doing it at 22, 23 years old. So he can only going to get better as these future seasons unfold, and it's going to be exciting to watch him really take his game to the level that he is capable of. Yeah, Rob, as you said, Urban Meyer literally destroyed this man's rookie year. I mean, he yeah. threw like 17 picks, 19 picks, like 11 touchdowns. He was nothing, basically. And that wrote a lot of people off, a lot of casual right. a lot fans of off, off to Trevor Lawrence. And then you see him come in with a guy like Doug Peterson, who has a lot of history of making quarterbacks reach that next level. And he came in this year, barely turned the ball over, threw for a lot of touchdowns, ran for a couple touchdowns, really looked like the whole package as a quarterback. And sometimes that's what it takes. It's where you are in the system that you're in to really bring out, you know, the best part of your game. And Trevor Lawrence, like you said, is one of the greatest quarterback prospects of all time. And now that he has some really good receivers that they went and got, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, they really showed out. Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley. Right. They really showed out not only because of the system, but because of how effective Trevor Lawrence is as a quarterback. And as Trevor Lawrence continues to run the ball more, puts on a little bit more weight, he's one of the more slender frames in the league, just like Justin Herbert. So maybe he puts on a little more weight and just, you know, runs the ball a little bit more, but I mean, he can really do it all. And it's going to be really impressive to see him with a full receiving staff this year and his second year into Doug Peterson. So big year for, for Trevor Lawrence coming up, no question about it. Yeah, I mean, if Doug Peterson can get an MVP caliber season out of Carson Wentz <laughs> and a Super Bowl out of Nick Foles, yep. just imagine what he can do with the talent that Trevor Lawrence possesses. Oh, yeah, it's coming with T-Law. Just wait. So those are the top five best 
franchise cornerstones, top five under 25 players in the NFL right now. Looking forward to seeing who you would put in yours if you leave them in the comments below. A lot of first team all pros, a lot of future MVPs. Drop your top five below and make sure you smash that like button and double tap that subscribe because we're coming back every single week with some fire ass episodes. See you guys next time. Peace.